Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here. Now, this little channel of mine is normally about video games, but I thought it's mostly just about me and things I like, so I'm going to deviate from the norm and talk about something special, something that changed my life forever. We're talking about Barbie and the Rockers. This was originally a two-part TV special created by Deke Entertainment. It was supposed to be the pilot for a Barbie cartoon series, but Deke and Mattel had a falling out of sorts, leaving us with two 25-minute long episodes that were later released on VHS tape as one movie. The character designs were based on the Barbie and the Rockers doll set, which featured them as rock musicians. I watched the shit out of this tape when I was young because I desperately wanted to be a rock star and I loved music. In fact, all of my childhood tapes were music related. We sing, musicals, Disney sing along, and so forth. Though this isn't quite my vision of what a rock star looks like, I suppose you can make anything metal if you try hard enough, even shoulder pads. Over time, I decided I want to go for this look, but still, I'd like to say this tape inspired me in some way. So Barbie and her band are shown here rocking out to a cover of Catches If You Can. This song was originally performed by the Dave Clark Five. In fact, there are several oldies played throughout these episodes, which I will bring up, but I think it's implied that they are Barbie and the Rockers originals for the sake of the story. Right away, you are smacked in the face with Barbie's popularity. Literally everyone likes her. I'm not being figurative here, people. Literally every person in the world. Barbie has taken the Highland by storm. We have never seen anything like this. The new darling of the Russian people. We never want Barbie to go home. And then she thought, wait a minute, who can I impress now? The paparazzi hound her for answers. Come on, Barbie, tell us. And she responds with this super vague hint. I'll only say one thing. It's going to be out of this world. Barbie and the gang need some relaxation and head out to eat. The beautiful but perfectly empty Derek asks, Where to? <laughs> Where else? Clouds in the sky! Yeah, sure, that's normal looking. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck? Do places like this exist? I wanna go there. I wanna go to clouds in the sky. As the group wistfully looks into the stars in what could be called the most blatant foreshadowing on the planet, they discuss how sad they are now that their tour is over. Barbie reassures them that everyone will be okay by engaging them in a spontaneously choreographed song and dance number. Oh yeah, I love this song just a little bit. Though I don't quite understand this move. Is this a dance? They're just walking backwards. And it's not even a moonwalk. It's just literally walking backwards. And just in case you didn't realize that Barbie is the star of this show, here's her getting in the way of her little friend's chorus line. They want so desperately to be a part of the dance, but bam, Barbie. The next morning, Barbie gets a formal invitation in the mail. Read it out loud. Read it out loud. Oh, Derek, bless your heart. Whoa, wait, did you see that? Did Derek just do a weird thing with his mouth? Why is there only one frame of this and why does Derek not have any teeth? Oh, Derek. The World Peace Organization invites Barbie to an honorary ball where they will crown her the first ambassador for world peace. This leads to a montage of Barbie and the girls trying to pick out the appropriate attire to another cover of another oldie, I'm Happy Just to Dance With You by the Beatles. This whole sequence is full of weird editing and swaying from side to side. I could just hear the direction given for these scenes. What should I do to make this more exciting? Eh, I don't know, just make the frame turn 180 degrees or something. Okay, now make it turn the opposite direction. Holy shit, that is so good. During the ball, Barbie makes her big announcement that the next thing the group will be doing is going to outer space to perform a concert. Our next concert? dedicated to world peace, will be the first concert ever performed in outer space. Outer, outer space? space? <laughs> Surprise! Time to go through a lot of grueling training that nobody asked for. It's not that I don't think it's a fantastic idea, because it is. It's just... Derek, no. Just... Just stop. You're gonna give yourself an aneurysm. Training for outer space is easy when you have a song by the Love and Spoonful to motivate you. Do you 
in no time at all, they have an obnoxiously pink space shuttle and are adorned with the appropriate space travel clothing. They really do make space travel look like the easiest thing in the world. Apparently, all you really have to do to get to space is press a few buttons and pull this giant lever. When they get to the station, the girls get into their rocker gear. You see that ribbon thing in Barbie's hair? It reminds me of these shoelace barrettes I used to wear. It looked really stupid. Speaking of stupid, the space station where they're holding the concert is a giant flower. Someone please explain this to me. Through the magic of fiction, the concert is broadcast to the entire world where Barbie implores for world peace. Today is the first day of world peace. If we all want it enough, it won't be the last. And that's the end of part one. The sequel is called Barbie and the Sensations Rockin' Back to Earth. Yes, their name inexplicably changed to The Sensations, we'll get to that later. To pass the time on their commute back to Earth, the group decides to play some music, which, by the way, isn't too bad. I actually like all the original songs in this tape. Somehow, the music they played was so out of this world that it triggered a time loop. They go through it and end up in the late 1950s, where they meet a little girl named Kim and her scientist father named Dr. Mary Hugh, who are completely enamored and not scared by them at all. Are you Martians? No! Do we look like Martians? I'm Barbie, and these are the Rockers. Um, uh, I'm Dr. Mary Hugh, and this is my daughter Kim. I can't believe how laid back Dr. Mary Hugh and Kim are about these people who allegedly came from outer space. They don't even question it. Without any doubt in his mind, Dr. Mary Hugh decides to help them get back to their own time. But for now, shopping spree and makeover montage. All right. Best friends. Barbie just fits right in with everyone, no matter where she goes or what time period she's in. This is where they change their name to Barbie and the Sensations, because it's not good enough that her band is already a smash hit in the future, they also have to build a career in the past, which... I have no idea. Wouldn't that mess things up in the future? If Barbie and the Sensations are a hit, wouldn't people who grow up recognize them in the future and be utterly confused? Oh, time travel, you're just never written well. Kim has been feeling lonely and feels like she doesn't have any friends, but no worries. Barbie says they will always be friends, which frankly is a bold-faced lie because she's eventually going to have to go back to her own time. All close friendships are definitely founded on blatant fabrications. Oh, uh, what the fuck, Ken? Move your face. That's what makes you human. They decide to go to the malt shop for some yumblies. Want a frozen yogurt, Kim? A frozen what? Uh, I mean, uh, banana split. Oh, thank God! Good save, Ken! But wait, did they not know what yogurt was? It should be phrased, a what yogurt? I mean, if I had heard that, I'd be like, frozen yogurt? That sounds good! What is it? We did have yogurt in the 50s, people. This has been a nitpicky reaction by Pushing Up Roses. If you ignore the absurdities of this plot, the musical parts are really enjoyable. My parents were teenagers in the 60s, so I grew up on a lot of oldies music. Seeing it played here, covered by Barbie and the Rockers, was such a treat for me as a kid. Despite making what could be considered subpar pop music, Barbie and the Sensations managed to have a fruitful career in the 50s. And no one will ever know because they changed their name from Barbie and the Rockers to Barbie and the Sensations. Completely different! Jesus, how long are they gone for? Don't they have family in the future wondering where they are? Barbie is so selfish. Gosh! They plan one last concert at Cape Canaveral, where they plan to go back into space despite having no idea how they'll actually get back to the future. My favorite part of this whole thing is when she's approached by some legitimate astronauts who so badly desire to go to space with her. I can't wait to get out there in space, but I don't want to miss your concert either, Barbie. Oh, you'll get there all right. I'm sure of it. So yes, Barbie is now not only loved by everyone, she will be the first person to go into space. This cannot get more absurd. Wait, I'm sorry, jump the gun there, it totally can. Dr. Mary Hugh comes up with some silly bullshit as to how they triggered a time tunnel. Somehow the position of the planets and the musical chords you played triggered that time tunnel. We just need to repeat those same chords with the planets in the same position.
Yep, that was also my reaction. They manage to get everything set up and Barbie gives one final goodbye to Kim, assuring her that they'll see each other again. She also gives her this hideous gold locket as a token of their friendship. All successful friendships are founded on cheap material things. They finish up their set and then trigger the time tunnel on the stage! Holy shit! This is the most metal concert I've ever seen! I'd pay to go to this concert! As the band plays their chords, the time tunnel engulfs the whole ship and they scurry on in. Kim bids Barbie a farewell and blows the weirdest sounding kiss ever. Hi, Barbie. Amazing! They even had time to get back into their space outfits after boarding the ship. They could honestly have a very lucrative career as quick change magicians. They're spat back out at their welcome home concert in the future. How, I have no idea, but they're suddenly back in their 50s clothing again. During their concert, Barbie sees someone waving her down in the audience. Before even knowing who she is, she winks at her. Barbie? Yes? Yeah, no, don't wink at strangers, that's weird. It does turn out to be Kim and her daughter, to which she offers another wink that's probably a little more appropriate. Wow, mommy really does know you. <laughs> we go way back. Barbie, you're my favorite. Barbie's everybody's favorite for all time. See, I told you, Barbie is everyone's favorite, literally every person. And that's what we end on. There's no explanation about what happened in the 30 years Barbie was back in time, but nobody seems to care. People just want to rock, you know? This tape is so riffable, it's amazing. I can't believe I essentially wore mine out from watching it so much as a kid. It really struck a chord with me. <laughs> but even through all of its corniness, I think the special's pretty great. The music is genuinely good. I never thought I would say that about a Barbie special, but I really did enjoy it, and it's just a fun ride all around, especially for kids. I wanted to be a rock star when I was young, so this tape was absolutely badass for me even with the shoulder pads. So if you've ever wondered why I turned out so metal and badass, it's all thanks to Barbie and the Rockers. Or the Sensations. Or whatever. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review of Barbie and the Rockers Out of This World and its sequel, Barbie and the Sensations Rockin' Back to Earth. Let me know if you liked this video and if you want to see more VHS specials in the future. Check the description below for my social network profiles and consider being a patron of mine if you want to support my dream of becoming a rock star. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one.